Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Please remember to like and subscribe. You can always get notifications to learn all about insects you've never heard about before. So today I wanted to talk about an article that was just recently published about a new species of cicada, which occurs in a very, very tiny region of Northern California. And the genus name is Okanagana, which uh, is a genus of quite a few species in the Western United States. Uh, I think globally, there's something like 45 species. But uh, this is a new species, one of two new species that they discovered in the same area of Northern California. And the area that they discovered this cicada in is in Sonoma County, which is right north of San Francisco. So you're not talking about necessarily in the middle of nowhere. But the region itself is known as the Cedars, which is a very small uh, kind of niche ecological area made up of primarily serpentine soils, which if you haven't heard of this, the, these are a special kind of soil uh, made up from the degradation of serpentine rock. The soils tend to be extremely acidic. They tend to have a lot of heavy metals and you end up with kind of unique plants being able to grow in these areas. And from this sort of unique plant community, you end up with some very unique animals living on those plants. And this species of Okanagana is apparently one of them. So this is what the habitat looks like. So it's, uh, it seems to be a fairly harsh habitat. And these new cicadas, Okanagana monochroma, live in this area and appear to only live on the western azalea, which is this type of rhododendron, uh, which occurs in this area. And it doesn't seem to have that large of a distribution. Once upon a time, it may have been a little... Uh, of a more full distribution, but now it's a very scattered distribution outside of this very uh, specific ecosystem. So the identification of cicadas, even when it's a species we already know about, can be somewhat difficult. Unlike many other insects, cicadas have to have both a morphological description and a description of their song. Cicadas themselves tend to be a little bit uh, plastic, in their appearances. So one of the genera that people are most familiar with are the periodic cicadas, the periodical cicadas magis cicada, which occurs all over the Eastern United States. And these are the ones that emerge every 13 years or 17 years. And as species, they're partially defined by this 13 year or 17 year life cycle. But another type of cicada that you're probably very familiar with are the annual cicadas, and these are like the neotibicins, the green and brown cicadas that you see every summer, uh, sometimes called the dog day cicadas, and they are uh, highly plastic in their patterning and their coloration, and many specimens within a single species can have variable sorts of coloration. So you can't fully rely on you know, the morphological cues that you're getting from a quick visual inspection. For a lot of cicadas, you need to know how, what the song sounds like. So now when cicadas are described, it is best to have a sample of their song, which this paper this paper includes, so that they did a good job of, with that. Uh, other groups that do this are things like uh, grasshoppers and katydids. It's really useful to have the song, and you can actually identify most of the species by just their song. Uh, if you don't have access to, you know, any morphological information. So the males and females were collected in this uh, cedar's environment, and they were described along, uh, along with them, there were five other species of cicada. One other group of cicadas uh, was collected that appears to be a new species, and I would assume the authors are currently putting together that paper. So this is the habitus of the male, um, and then the venter of the male. And you can see uh, with a lot of these cicadas and with a lot of insects in general, you have to have uh, genitals present. So these are the male genitals from the side and from the top, and then the female genitalia, which is extremely useful for identification. And then they also included photos of the timbal. This is the organ on the side of the cicada, which vibrates in order to produce the sound in the males. The females don't have a timbal, but they did collect quite a bit of uh, egg casings and egg scarrings from where the females laid eggs on these western azaleas. One of the questions raised in this paper, being that this is a new species of cicada, and it appears to have a very, very narrow uh, host, or very, very narrow host range and a very, very narrow geographic range, 
is what is the evolution of this species? Um, is this something that evolved in this very specific ecosystem in the cedars on Western azaleas? Or is this something uh, that used to be much more widespread and is now limited to, limited to this micro niche? Once upon a time, it's possible that the Western azaleas and this sort of serpentine ecosystem was more widespread, but now is extremely limited. So is this uh, a case of a species gradually going extinct uh, and becoming more and more limited in its ecosystem because of uh, the natural loss of this extremely kind of rare ecosystem? Or is it something that specifically evolved in this uh, very small area of the mountains uh, to take advantage of this very strange ecosystem. And there is no answer to that, you know, right now, but it is something that is worth thinking about. Generally speaking with uh, insects and other animals, being a hyper specialist is not necessarily a good thing because it makes you very susceptible to extinction. So if you only have, for instance, one host, you are completely dependent on the success of that host. And if anything happens to that your entire species is kind of screwed over. So not a great thing. Also interestingly is that Okanagana is a genus that tends to be extremely widespread. And this is a member of that genus, which has done the opposite. It has an extremely narrow uh, distribution, extremely narrow host range, extremely narrow everything. And because cicadas are relatively bad dispersers living underground for the majority of their life, it is unlikely that this uh, species will be able to disperse out of this very narrow geographic range in order to take advantage of kind of uh, spotty hosts elsewhere. So with that, I'll link the paper. It's fairly short, uh, lots of photos. Uh, you should definitely check it out and I'll talk to you guys later.